In this video, I want to talk about the double angle formula for cosine, which it turns out there's actually three versions of the double angle formula for cosine, of the first of which we're going to talk about this one right here, but there are some consequences uh, that are often pushed with the double angle formula. So I want to talk about each and every one of those. So let's talk about, again, just the first one right here. Cosine, cosine of 2a is equal to cosine squared of a minus sine squared of a. And to see that, let's take the left-hand side, which is equal to cosine of 2a, 2a right there. And I'm going to treat this as if it's an angle sum identity where just I use the same angle twice. So this really we think of as cosine of a plus a right here. And so then if we use the angle sum identity for cosine, we're going to get cosine of a cosine. Well, normally if we were taking cosine of a plus b, we'd get cosine a cosine b. But as b is just the angle a used twice, we're going to get cosine a cosine a. Then we're going to get minus sine of a, sine of, well, again, on the standard formula, it's cosine a, cosine b, minus sine a, sine b, but a and b are the same angle, so we just get angle a twice here. And so then simplifying this, we see we're going to get a cosine squared of a minus sine squared of a. That is the right-hand side, and that establishes the first of the angle sum identities, excuse me, the double angle identities for cosine. So cosine of 2a equals cosine squared of a minus sine squared of a. And for me personally, this is the one I remember the most, mostly because it resembles most closely the angle sum identity. So you have two cosines and two sines, right? Um, it also kind of looks like a Pythagorean relationship. It's just now it's negative instead of plus. And so maybe that makes it easier to remember. Now, when it comes to practical uses of the double angle identity, this won't be very useful, but there's two other ones, two alternate versions that can be very useful. So let's talk about those for a second. So cosine of 2a is equivalent to 2 times cosine squared of a minus 1. It's also equivalent to 1 minus 2 times sine squared of a. Well, why would you have these alternative versions? Uh, well, the thing is, when you look at cosine of 2a, this one involves both cosine and sine, but you look at these alternatives, cosine of 2a could be expressed as just 2 times cosine squared of a minus 1. So you could express cosine of 2a only using cosine. You don't need to know what sine is. You could get away with just knowing cosine. And the third one, cosine of 2a is equal to 1 minus 2 times sine squared of a. Well, where does it, what do you do with that? Well, if you only know sine, you can still compute cosine of 2a. You don't need to know both cosine and sine. So let's talk about this, uh, the proofs of, of, of them, right? So how do you prove cosine of 2a is equal to 2 cosine squared of a minus 1? Well, the idea is you're going to utilize the Pythagorean relationship. So notice that cosine squared of a plus sine squared of a is equal to 1. So if you solve for sine squared, you get that sine squared of a is equal to 1 minus cosine squared of a. And we're going to make this substitution into the original uh, formula we have right there. So basically, if you prove that one, the left-hand side is equal to cosine of 2a. Well, as we've already established, this is equal to cosine squared a minus sine squared a. And then we're going to replace the sine squared with uh, something equivalent that comes from the Pythagorean relationship. You get 1 minus cosine squared of a like so. For which then if you distribute that negative sign, you end up with cosine squared minus 1 plus cosine squared. So you see that the cosine squares double up. So you get 2 cosine squared of a minus 1. And that's then proving the right-hand side like so. Um, we can do the same trick here uh, for the third one. So if you want to prove that cosine of 2a is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared of a, the idea here is you take your Pythagorean relationship again, cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. This time you solve for cosine, and so you get cosine squared of a equals 1 minus sine squared. And then you're going to substitute in this for the cosine squared right here. So again, the argument's very similar, very quick. You get that cosine of 2a, 2a, this is equal to cosine squared of a minus sine squared of a. You're going to replace this time the cosine with 1 minus sine squared of a. You have a minus sine squared of a. And so combining like terms, you get 1 minus 2 sine squared of a. 
and this is equal to the right hand side. Why do we go through the details of these proofs all the time? Well, one, as a, as a student in trigonometry, you will be expected to prove trigonometric identities. So it's good to see examples of this. Two, as, you, as you're starting to see that these lists of trigonometric identities get longer and longer and longer, there's three versions of cosine of 2a. How do you remember all of those? Well, the thing is you don't have to remember all of those. If you remember the original one, cosine of 2a is equal to cosine squared minus sine squared. If you remember that one and you remember the Pythagorean identity, then you can splice the two together to get you these alternative ones if perchance you, need, you needed them and you didn't remember them. So this is sort of like desert island trigonometry. What do you need? You know, after you've crashed in the Pacific Ocean, you, you wash up on an island, the only thing that survived is you and your volleyball. Uh, how do you do trigonometry? Well, it's like, oh, I still have the double angle identity. I still have the Pythagorean identity. I can then recreate these other identities in, you know, in a rush if I needed to. So let's look at some calculations involving the double angle identity. Let's suppose that we know sine of a is equal to one over the square root of five. Okay, we wanna compute cosine of two a. Well, like we saw on the previous slide, cosine of two a is equal to cosine squared of a minus sine squared of a. So if we know sine squared, excuse me, if we know sine and cosine, then we can compute a double angle. We know sine, but we don't know cosine. Um, and so what we could do is we could try to compute cosine directly, but we don't know the quadrant we're in. So the best we could do is we could get the absolute value of cosine. Now, fortunately, because you're squaring it, you don't need to know whether it's positive or negative. It'll be positive when you square it no matter what. So we could do that. But even better is if we know sine, we don't even need to know cosine whatsoever because cosine of 2a is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared of a. Remember how cosine is a jerk and prefers cosine over other sines, right? That's why the negative is in front of the sine. That thing is inherited with these alternative versions, right? So you notice you have a 1 minus 2 sine squared. Uh, that's because cosine doesn't like sine, so the negative sine will stay in front of the sines there. So we can compute the value with just sine. We don't need to know cosine. That's, that's a huge save of effort. We don't have to bother computing cosine here. So we get one minus two times one over the square root of five squared. When you square uh, this one over the square root of five, you're just gonna get one fifth. So you get one minus two fifths right here. So we can think of one as five fifths. Five fifths, take away two fifths. Oh boy, uh, that's gonna give us three fifths. And so then cosine of 2a is going to equal 3 fifths. We are able to compute that without using um, information about cosine because we are able to choose the form of cosine of 2a that's most convenient for us. Let's try to prove a trigonometric identity involving the double angle. This one actually uses the quadruple angle, right? Cosine of 4x here. And so believe it or not, I'm actually going to take the left-hand side uh, to start with because what I can see here is that the left-hand side, since it's cosine of 4x, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna treat this as the double-double angle. So notice that cosine of 4x is cosine of 2, 2x, for which then I can apply a double angle identity to that. But which double angle identity do I use? Do I use cosine squared minus sine squared? Do I use two cosine squared minus one? Or do I use one minus two sine squared? Well, this is where we look at the right-hand side here. Notice the right-hand side only involves cosines. I have a cosine to the fourth. I have a cosine squared. Uh, I have a constant. There's no sines. So maybe I should use the double angle identity that only involves cosines. So what this is going to give me is that the double angle identity will be 2 times cosine squared of something minus 1. Now that something is the angle we've doubled. So since I started with 4x, which is double 2x, the 2x is what's going to go inside of here. And so then we have 2 cosine squared of 2x minus 1. But you'll notice that the cosine squared of 2x, it's still a double angle. Um, and so before I apply the double angle identity, I'm going to rewrite this thing to make it very clear that this square is affecting the entire cosine. And so if we apply the double angle identity to cosine of 2x there, we're going to square whatever that substitution is. And again, because the right-hand side is only involving cosines, I'm going to just use the cosine identity. 2 cosine squared of x minus 1. This is squared. We're going to subtract 1. So we need to FOIL out what's in the brackets there. Um, doing so, we're going to get a 4 cosine uh, squared squared, which is the fourth power. Then we're going to get a negative 2 cosine squared. We're going to get another negative 2 cosine squared. And then we're going to get a plus 1, like so, minus 1. 
Uh, let's see, combine some like terms. These cosine squares combine together. Uh, so we're going to get negative 4 cosine squared of x plus 1, uh, minus 1 there. Then I distribute the 2 onto all of these pieces. So we're going to get an 8 cosine to the 4th. Oops, I didn't write it down that, there correctly. Uh, that should be, oh boy, that should be a 4. Uh, so we get 8 cosine to the 4th x minus 8 cosine squared. And then we're going to get a plus 2. But then we have a minus 1 for which when that minus 1 with the plus 2 interact, we end up with, of course, 8 cosine to the 4th x minus 8 cosine squared x. And then we're going to get a plus 1, which you'll notice that is the right-hand side, thus completing the trigonometric identity. And so we can use the double angle identity for cosine in all the settings where it might be appropriate, of course. But with cosine, you have some options. What's better? Do I want only cosines? Do I want only sines? Or do I want both cosine squared and sine squared? Depending on the context, you'll make that decision.